If you want to get yourself a classical Greek hoplite helmet, well, you'll probably want to get yourself one of these, because it's the, well, it's the classic, classical hoplite helmet, isn't it? It's the Corinthian style, uh, as worn around the time of the Peloponnesian War. Uh, notice that uh, this one doesn't have the cutouts for the ears. I didn't want that sort. I wanted the earlier sort, not the, the later Hellenistic rubbish. Um, now, this one is not brilliantly authentic. It's not been forged, for instance, out of a single lump of bronze, as many of the originals were. Uh, it is instead, I'm afraid, yes, it's three pieces of steel welded together in India. Uh, but they've done a reasonably good job of it, and uh, I'm reasonably happy with the shape. Um, you notice that it makes my head look a lot bigger, and I hope it makes me look uh, imposing, even maybe perhaps terrifying. <laughs> Well, um, that is one of their functions. Um, Homer talks about the horsehair crests on the helmets of the warriors nodding terribly. This is uh, clearly something that he felt was designed to, to frighten people. And I think, actually, if I saw a lot of people wearing these, uh, I, I would be fairly frightened, although maybe not just for the reason that it made their heads look bigger. Um, did they decorate them? Uh, yes, there are plenty of pictures suggesting that they decorated them, so I've decorated mine, damn it, because I wanted to. Um, what else can I say about it? Uh, the cheek pieces. Um, you've got a big slit in the middle uh, through which I'm talking to you, so I'm sure that's one of its principal functions, so that you could shout. Um, also, uh, it means that less of your breath condenses on the inside of the faceplate and drips down, though I imagine e even, um, even so some would. So a warrior who'd been in the field for a while would perhaps have a couple of little dew drops uh, on the end of these two little points here. It comes down quite a bit lower than my chin, and Yes, if I do lower my head, I can actually bash myself in the front of my cuirass, or cuirass, whichever you prefer. Um, and that is a little bit awkward, but I prefer to have this because it protects my otherwise rather exposed neck from blows coming in like this. Now, I've just noticed by uh, seeing myself in the monitor on the camera that I do look a little bit like a Star Wars Imperial Stormtrooper. But I'm going to try to put that out of my mind now. Um, the eye socket. The eye socket um, doesn't interfere with forward vision at all. I can see you absolutely fine. Well, I can't see you. I can see the camera. And neither does it interfere with upward vision much at all. You can probably see that my eyebrows and the brows of the helmet are pretty much in the same sort of place. Uh, so upward, fine. Forward, fine. To the side, yep. My eyes only swivel about that far sideways anyway, so these cutouts are definitely adequate for uh, letting me see left and right, as I'm used to. No, the real... The, the, oh, the bad thing is down. Down, I can't see well at all. I've only got this slit to see through downwards, but my eyes aren't in the middle of my face, so this one sees through the slit that way, and this one sees through the slit that way. And if I put my hand just here... Yes, that's right. It's only... The tip of it's about level with my nose, a little bit down from my nose, and it's smack in front of me. I can't see that. I cannot see my right hand. I can see it now through the slit. I can see it now through the slit. But it's hiding behind a sort of virtual faceplate. I can see a, um, a long, a tall um, trapezium shape. It's wider at the top than at the bottom, floating in front of my face. I, I can try to pick it up. Of course, it's not really there. It's just a construct of my brain trying to put together the pictures of two contradictory eyes, and I, there is this blank blind spot in the middle, and I can't see anything here because of the cheek, cheek place, and down is really bad. If I want to be able to see my toes, I have to do that, which makes me very vulnerable. And you know, I've done a lot of reenact reenactment, and we didn't actually have real dying people with real sharp stuff on the ground, but you know, I. I got the uh, strong impression from re reenactment that it'd be very important to be able to see where you're putting your feet because when there are real riding people in agony, some of whom are not on your side and don't actually have your best interests at heart, um, you really want to be able to see down, perhaps to dispatch them uh, with your lizard killer or perhaps just to avoid them. Treading on a body is not good footing. Um, you don't want to trip over brambles or rocks or any other such things that exist in the classical world in profusion. So. My ability to see down being hampered so badly is a concern. Uh, while I was gathering stuff together to make this video, I was trying to rummage through some boxes and find some stuff, and I got so frustrated because trying to look down into the box I, and rummage through the contents, I couldn't see what I was doing, so in frustration I had to take the helmet off to do a basic task like that. Um, yes, so downward vision definitely encumbered. As for hearing, I can hear the world around me reasonably well, 
Uh, what I can hear, however, is myself massively amplified. I'm far. Uh, I'm not used to hearing my own voice caught on the inside of a helmet and then channeled round to my ears. So if I was shouting a lot, I would half deafen myself and certainly wouldn't be able to hear a lot of what else was going on. Um, and the, it doesn't go very low at the back, but it's okay because the uh, cuirass, or cuirass if you prefer, cuirass, um, covers the gap reasonably well. So I feel pretty protected at the back. And thanks to these, my throat doesn't feel quite so vulnerable, though of course an upward slanting blow would still get it. Um, noise. Now, I've heard the theory that one of these would ring, perhaps, like a bell, dong, when hit. And that's why I've been carrying this drumstick all the time, uh, because I want, to, I want you to imagine that this, that this is a helmet and that it rings when you hit it. Only I want you to imagine that when you stuff it on someone's head, it doesn't so much ring. And uh, when you've got the helmet on, though there's a little bit of a ring from the face plates, which are, are clear of my head, I don't know how long that uh, sounded to you as a sustain, but I could hear a little boom after the, after the blow. But on the, on, on the top, no, it doesn't really ring, not when you've stuffed your head in it. Um, now, if someone were to hit you right whack over where your ear is, um, that would sound extremely loud. A hard thing hitting a hard thing very hard right over your ear, yes, that would be deafening. However, the alternative, of course, is that the whatever it is goes slamming into the side of your head. And I'd, I'd definitely go for the, the loud noise every time. Right, uh, I've rambled for far too long as it is, and that's all I can think of to say at the moment uh, about Corinthian helmets.